Today I have uh, a special guest with me who has also gone through a lot and how CrossFit has saved his life. Sean has been a member with us for how many years has it been? Three years? Uh, yeah, right. Oh, coming up on three. Coming up on three. Coming three on years. Three. Yeah. And uh, you have a great story to tell. I'm Thank not going to tell it because you're a much better storyteller than I am. But Sean, tell us how CrossFit has saved your life. Yeah, thanks. So first off, thanks for having me here. I, I really appreciate it. Um, so my name is Sean Rocha. I'm uh, 53 years old. And um, I've actually been doing CrossFit since, I believe, 2014. Okay. I'll tell a little bit about that. But um, I'm 53 right now, but at 51 um, in 2001, um, I was going in for a routine physical. I was in law enforcement, um, retired after 27 years. But <clears throat> I, was, I was working it's just a regular day. I went in for just a normal physical, like my annual work physical. Mm -hmm. Pretty routine, pretty boring routine stuff, especially for somebody who's been working out and training and stuff like that so I go in on a Wednesday the last person there I mean literally they were closing the doors and I go in do my go in and do my physical and uh, Friday morning I'm going into work pulling into my facility and I get a get a call and um, the call was a was a receptionist at, at the uh, hospital that said hey uh, the doctor needs to see you and he's going to squeeze you in today um, in between surgeries and I'm wow. like wow yeah, I, I actually did, did that set off a red flag. Yeah, it set off a red flag because I have two young adult boys, and I thought, okay, now they're messing with me. I thought they were pranking me. <laughs> I, had, I had no idea. But if you've ever met my boys, both of them are, think they're comedians. So I just, it, it just, it struck me. Um, but I didn't recognize the number. <clears throat> then I could also hear the the soberness in her voice, and she's, mm. and I'm like, uh, so is, who who is this? This is so and so from Hogue Hospital. Doctor needs to see you. He's going to squeeze you in in between surgeries today wow at about the same time my phone starts blowing up from my wife and I, I could see her calling and i'm trying to hang up trying mm -hmm. to talk to this this you know woman on the phone so um she tells me that uh, i told her i said hey I'm, I'm i'm working is this are you are you kidding and she said well what's your line of work i said i'm in law enforcement so if, if, if you're serious then do, do i mean do i need to come now can i come after my shift she said hold on i'll, I'll be right back let me go find out and then she comes back a couple moments later and says, you, you may want to be relieved from duty today. <sighs> that was basically it because she wasn't a medical person. She couldn't explain. Yeah, she can't on. tell you anything. Yeah. But, oh, man, I can't imagine hearing uh, something like that. My God, my, my, I was going to say my heart dropped, no pun intended. <laughs> but I, um, so now I, so I get on the phone with my wife because she'd called two or three times now, which is it's er, it's early in the morning. Um, so I, I uh, my wife gets on the phone. She goes, hey, I got these emails from from the hospital and all this paperwork that they have attached is uh, pertains to um, pre-surgery. I'm like, what, like, what does it say? I told her this situation with the phone call. Mm -hmm. So to make a, a long story long, um, I, I didn't really know what was going on. I, I, I stayed on standby that entire Friday to meet with the doctor. I learned a little bit more that they, um, that they, I had an echocardiogram on my heart. It's just part of my routine physical. Now, people listening are going to go, that's not a part of a routine physical. Um, and I'll tell a little bit more about that in, in a moment. But it was part of my routine physical. I have some autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just part of my routine stuff. So anyways, I dra it drags out throughout the weekend. I, d I never get to see the doctor because he was busy. Sunday was basically an off day. Monday, I, I wait, and um, I'm not working. I, I don't really know what's going on. I finally um, get to speak to a doctor, and he says, hey, and he's got this sort of, you know, he wasn't, like, down. He was, you know, pretty cordial and almost cheerful. He says, hey, got some, you know, good news and bad news for you, and I'm, I'm a, just shoot it to me straight, don't mm -hmm. him all around. Like, I don't, I don't want to play any more guessing games. It had been, like, three days, three full days of me wondering what the heck was going on. And he just says, hey, you've got a bad heart valve, bad enough that we need to do surgery now. I'll explain more to you, you know, about the, the process, but you, you've, got a, you've got a bad valve. It's very routine. He gave me some crazy number of how many thousands of, of heart valve surgeries occur each day. The access rate is crazy. He's like, You're gonna, you, you have a better chance to get hit by lightning than this going bad. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to send you in for more testing. So they send me in, more testing, get some images of my heart, I kind of, you know, Google can be your friend or your enemy because as soon as you type in on Google, you know, I was being my own doctor and you find out just all these horrific things that can happen. Um, so I come, I go back in for them to tell me, 
you know, the situation was and the, the, the additional testing found that the um, valve was probably the least of my problems. I had an aortic arch, the mm-hmm. ascending aortic arch specifically, which is, which is, you know, main blood supply are coming out of your heart before it divides up into a bunch of different vessels and all, you know, I'll get c- corrected probably on the technical term, mm-hmm. but the bottom line was my, my ascending aortic arch was on the verge of rupturing. Which and, w- and if it did, would rupture, what would happen? So that's what they basically call the widow maker. Mm-hmm. Widow maker, which I, which I learned, you know, you, you always hear of people, I, he died at the widow maker, age 50, 51, looked fit. And there, there's some truth to that because it wasn't because I was leading some lifestyle that was, was not healthy. Um, you know, I, I was born with the, but the potential for having a heart issue, which, which was, oh, which was actually see. the bad valve. Okay. So it was just something that I was just, you just had, I, I, and it was I, just waiting? Ar, ar, arguably, because a lot of people have it. <clears throat> so, okay. um, so fast forward 10 days, 10 full days. Um, I'm in all of a sudden I'm just in full on open heart surgery. 10 days, 10 days. I that had, was a fast turnaround. It was quick. It was, it was actually almost nine and a half now because once I found out they're like, Hey, we were going to get you in, um, ASAP. Well, <laughs> so this was clearly an, an urgent situation, right? Then, I mean, not, not to, not to sound too overly, uh, dramatic, but literally I was, I was completely blessed with meeting this surgeon who was going to perform the surgery on me. Because at, at this time, I'd only talked to a, a, a cardiologist, and, mm. and and not only. I mean, the guy was awesome. But I get to speak to this surgeon who, I mean, came in with the swagger of, of John Wayne, this sor- sort of coolness about him that just I just felt immediately comfortable in a time that was completely uncomfortable. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, they're turning your lights out. You know, you're on life support um, and uh, pulled my heart out of my body. That's crazy. And um, so this stuff's getting explained to me. And the only thing I could think of is, man, I got two boys, man. Like, they're they're grown men, so to speak. But yeah. I got kids, man. I got a wife. I haven't retired yet. Right. I've lived my entire life committed to being healthy. Oh, 100%. Even if the science now would say, well, hey, that wasn't so healthy. But I've literally for, you know, my entire yeah. life, I've been, I've, been, I've been walking the walk, not yeah. just talking it. Um, so I talked to this surgeon who who coincidentally was a Red Wolf guy mm-hmm. and awesome. Like I tell you, a guardian angel for me, like some people are going to go, oh, here we go with the, the, the dramatics. No, nah, man, this guy, I, I believe was a, a key component in saving my life, not just literally because he did the surgery, but the sort of confidence that came with it and his understanding of, of my level of health, mm. my fitness level, his understanding of my fitness level um, and I, and I hope he watches this and can correct me on some stuff, but this is my understanding of it. Mm-hmm. After a bunch of testing, like I'm talking lots of blood drawn, lots of images of my heart, lots of everything. Um, he felt that I was, I was healthy enough to put it off a little bit, meaning oh, okay. that, meaning that they could hydrate my body and, and get ready for this, for this, you know, surgery that, you know, brain surgery and heart surgery are the, are two huge ones. Yeah. And so I'm having full on, um, you know heart surgery where they basically cut me from the top of my uh, collarbone here it's my top of my sternum all the way down to the bottom spread me open pull my heart out they literally pull your heart out pull my heart out i actually met the uh two, two of the people that that had to i'm, I'm, I'm using the scooping motion because they said the one gentleman's hands were so big he couldn't get into my chest plate because they didn't it wasn't open far enough so this um another assistant who had smaller hands she was a, actually able to pull my heart out of my body while they while that they, is while they crazy crazy that is crazy, that is crazy work, they man. can literally pull crazy. your heart out and then put it back in and then you're with us today yeah that man. is insane i'm blessed man i'm like i'm blessed i i i, I can attribute um I, I actually i'm all over the place if you if you said that we could do a five hour podcast on me talking about you know coincidences and and luck and all that stuff. I mean, there were so many stars that lined up for me. I, yeah. Honestly, there's a lot of stars that lined up for me for it to work out the way it did. Mm-hmm. Um, so but, tell us what happened. Like, at, so so you had the surgery. I had the heart surgery. You had the heart surgery. So everything went well. Everything obviously, went great. <laughs> knock, knock on wood. <laughs> Sorry if I'm making some no, crazy fine, noise on fine. the podcast, but everything went good. Okay, everything went good for me. I, I, it went better than expected, and I didn't know what to expect. Like I say, I had a little bit of time to research. Um, and then I just quit researching. I, I literally, after about day two or three, I just quit. 
Uh, my wife is the researcher of all researchers. I mean, she is on, she's on it. Um, as I mentioned before, I've got some autoimmune issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we've, we've researched stuff in the past. And most of that stuff can be managed through proper diet and exercise. Right. Which is a huge reason why I, why I do CrossFit. Mm -hmm. It's a huge reason why I, why I watch what I eat. And um, like everyone, man, I have my weaknesses. You know, I, I have my cheat days and stuff like that, but I don't even look at it as like yeah. a cheat day. I just look at it as, hey, I'm human, yeah. right? And there's some, you know, there's things we do as humans that may not be the best for us health-wise, but mentally, sometimes eating a cinnamon roll can feel good. Right. Let's right? go back a little bit to the, back to the surgery. How long did the surgery take? So, um, you know, I had, I had that 10 days to get ready. I, I know that at 445, I have to be at, at Hogue. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hogue, for such being such awesome people, man. Everybody, everybody there was awesome to me and my family. So I get to get to the hospital at four forty-five a.m. Um, I'm in a very small waiting room. Corona is, you know, it's twenty twenty-one, no, November twenty twenty-one. Corona stuff has kind of slowed down, but all the protocol for you know people visiting you in the hospital and all those things. Um, once once they sent me back for surgery, that was it. Um, I was able to visit with my wife and, and after the surgery, and I was able to visit with my son um, one at a time, mm -hmm. my kids one at a time. Um, but so I go uh, show up that morning, and um, I'm, I'm more I'm hydrated like I'm doing three Ironmans in a row. Mm -hmm. They tell me to stay, get hydrated. Dude, you, you know, I, there was only certain things I could control. Mm -hmm. One of those was uh, mentally being prepared, and um, which, which um, you know, I think, Dr. Tony Caffarelli for preparing me for that. He's mm -hmm. the surgeon, and uh, and and next thing you know, man, it's like 5:30 a.m. They wheel me back, and um, I wake up about 2:30. Okay. In the, in the afternoon, I wake up um, within 15 minutes. My recollection. Now, apparently, I was waking up a little bit earlier. I don't really have any recollection of that. Mm -hmm. My first recollection is me uh, at 2.30. I'm looking at my son who's holding my hand. And he's like, hey, man, you made it. Wow. And the first thing I did is throw up this crazy shaka. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God, this thing, this guy's thinking about going surfing already. Yeah. But I throw up a shaka, try to sit up, and they're like, whoa, sit me back. Um, you know, and they unplug me from machines because I'm on all kinds of stuff. Um, I have an intubator and all that stuff. They pull that stuff out of me. Next thing you know, by 3 o'clock, I'm up walking. Wow. I don't have a whole lot of, you know, they're obviously holding on to me, so I don't wow. stumble and fall. So within, so within 24 hours of you arriving at the hospital, you're already walking. Dude, within eight hours. Wow. Heart, heart out of the body, heart back in the body. Oh, eight hours. Wired oh. up, sewed up, on my feet, and wow. moving. And moving. and moving. That is insane. Yeah, there's. A, I, my wife took a, a photo, or my son, someone took a photo. Literally, it's within that eight-hour window, nine-hour window, me on my feet, smiling, and looking at the camera. It's unbelievable to me. Um, it's unbelievable, man. It's That's unbelievable. crazy. Would you say that CrossFit or, I mean, CrossFit in general and fitness, your fitness background in general had something to do with your what? ability to handle, your body, first off, to be able to handle what was happening, also, not to mention your recovery afterwards, would yeah. you say that that was an instrumental part of that? I would say from a physical standpoint, from a fitness standpoint, it is the reason. It is the reason. It is the wow. reason. So you know, now I sound like the, the new CrossFit guy that all I can talk about is CrossFit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For me, CrossFit, it's, it, it, was, it was, it gave me, I mentioned earlier I had confidence in and me taking care, of every, taking care of everything I could take care of for getting ready for this huge, huge surgery and just a huge traumatic blow to your body, to all systems in your body, endocrine system, all these systems in my body were shut down. They basically, I need a doctor out there to correct me on the temperature, but they basically froze me, brought my temperature down to freezing and shut most of your systems down, put me on life support. I got lungs breathing for me. I got my heart out of my body. I got machines pumping my blood. And eight hours later, I'm on my feet. Now, w what I knew was, which gave me some confidence that my, you know, my surgeon, uh, Mr. Caffarelli, put, put back on me because it was, it was just, gr everything was just great. I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah. I couldn't even really think. I couldn't, I couldn't really process because even though there was some stuff that you could look up, look up and you go, okay, well, this gives me confidence. At the end of the day, my, my life was in someone else's hands at a certain point. But what I knew was 
I have faith. I'm a Christian. And I knew there wasn't much. I, I was good there. Right. I was, mm-hmm. I was good in my right. faith. And um, also I knew that even though I'm not an athlete, like I'm as middle of the road athleticism as you could ever imagine. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm 53 now. I weigh like a buck 70, buck 75, you know. But I was 120 pounds graduating high school with my vans on, with a mullet and tons of hairspray in. <laughs> I graduated in 88. I'm an 80s kid. I was 120 pounds. I was like 5'5". Five, five, and I didn't grow till after, you know, after I got out of school. But I knew that up to that point, because I'd been training, doing some form of high intensity training before I ever met CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing it pretty, I've been doing it very consistently, actually, since 2014. Okay. I knew that my body at the time of that surgery was, it was like go time. I was like a MMA fighter. I was like an Olympian, so to speak, for just a, for a family guy who raises, he was raising a family, has a small business, was in law enforcement. My mm-hmm. point is I was a career guy raising, raising kids just like everybody out there. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like everybody, nothing special um, about me other than I fell in love with CrossFit. CrossFit fell in love with me and I... I didn't know that I was training for the fight of my life, which was which was the surgery. And when it came time, because I didn't know time or date, you just in your mind you're training. You know, sometimes we do local, you know, local CrossFit competitions, and and I, I, I hike as well. So I've done a lot of very big hikes, and so I'm I'm task oriented. And if I have a task in front of me, like, hey, Sean, there's going to be this local competition three months from now, and you and so and so can be partners or whatever it is. At least I got something on the calendar for me to train for. Um, but what I what I found out was that my training and and me being relentless with with fitness, um, I was ready. I couldn't be any more prepared physically, mentally. It was a lot to deal with, but physically, mm-hmm. I I couldn't be any more ready um, because of all of the training I was, had been doing in, in in CrossFit. Crazy. People ask me about it now, and, and just like you did, do you think? So you really think CrossFit saved you? <clears throat> it's 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 overwhelming. Yes, not just for the physical. There's a there's a community. Um, it's a tribe, and and I'm stealing someone else's podcast info or whatever because mm-hmm. it's it's the truth. It's it's not just a tribe. It's a family. <clears throat> and when you go every day to CrossFit or as many days as you can, and you go, you know, you go just dig deep and and find yourself in positions you go i don't know if i can do this Mm -hmm. and you see someone next to you equally in you know suffering you know in a good way i don't mean Mm -hmm. suffering badly but you know paying their dues and some older some younger some get get to train less than you some way more physical and in way better shape than you but when you when you are part of that community and that tribe um there comes a there comes an extra bit of confidence that i didn't know i would have um I didn't know I'd have prior to CrossFit. And it's a added benefit that sometimes is the main benefit that keeps me coming. It's sometimes it's the main benefit that keeps me coming. Because what I found out was just to back up a little bit, I live in Huntington Beach now and I've been here about three years, which is which is how I found you mm-hmm. and and the Red Wolf family. I consider myself to be part wolf now, which is, is funny, but it's true. Uh, because I had people reach out to me um, that, I, that I just know in passing that I just sweat it out with for an hour a day. And you know a little bit about them, right? Just because you see them every day, hey, how are we doing? We rope climbs today, and oh my gosh, it's thrusters, and you know all that type of stuff. But they don't, they don't know me but personally. There was a, there was a, there's some humanity that, that I felt from this community here at Red Wolf and my, and my first CrossFit family at CrossFit West Visalia. I, I had, an, had an amazing family there as well that reached out to me and just to see how I was doing. Hey, man, That's awesome. do, does your family need help with food? Yeah. How are you doing? Hey, guess what? I can beat your score now. And <laughs> some of it with humor, some right. of it with just genuine caring about me. And um, that, that, when somebody told me to sit on the couch for the next three weeks, four weeks, or whatever it initially was before I could actually get up and move, that's what kind of pulled me through because I'm not a sit down and rest type of guy. I, I drove my family freaking nuts. This is the first time literally ever that I had to, I had to just sit on the couch. It was, it was my best opportunity to heal 
per my team that I trusted and believed in, my, my medical team. And they said, look, go figure out the Netflix uh, password. Go figure out your Amazon password. Because I, I literally didn't know how to do any of that. I have Netflix, mm -hmm. but it's just on the TV. And sometimes I sit down and watch a doc documentary. But I'm not sit down and rest guy. And it was the first time I had to just sit there, keep my arms below my armpits because they didn't want me opening up my all the metal and hardware mm -hmm. and stitches and all the stuff that I had in me. And I got to sit there and be with myself a lot and um, and realize that a lot of people cared. And those people overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly it was my CrossFit family. E even, I mean, I knew, I knew you and Caitlin as gym owners and, hey, Sean, how you doing? And everyone's great. But just the support, man, that, that, that support there was crucial. And it's, and here's the thing about it. It's not just here. It's a, it's a, it's a language that we speak within this community that if you drop in somewhere, you know, go, go work out in some other community you're on vacation on or working and you're part of that CrossFit family, they, they, they take you in with welcoming arms. Uh, as you know, I travel a little bit. I've been in Florida mm -hmm. um, working, you know, a little bit or just helping my son out with his business. And I, you know, I, I, I missed that. And so I find this other community, other CrossFit community, Miramar Strength and um, Fitness, and they they welcomed me in just because I was I was part of this this community, and um, and it's it's been amazing for me. Uh, am I rambling on? No, th no, that's awesome. That's really good stuff. Um, let's chat a bit about. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't have health problems who are putting it off. They always yeah. say, "Well, I'll start tomorrow. I'll start Monday." They're overweight, they're unhealthy. I mean, heart disease is one of the number one killers in the United States. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that you obviously prevented by just exercising mm -hmm. and working out and good nutrition. What you had was genetic and there's nothing you could do about yeah. it. But there are a lot of people out there who can take control mm -hmm. of their health and wellness. And if you could speak to them directly, what would you tell them? So if I, if, if I could tell another long, short story. Mm -hmm. So the odd thing about my, my surgery um, you know, and my, me, me having this heart condition. So my, my condition is not all that un uncommon, mm -hmm. right? I had, I had a valve, a, a bicuspid valve, which means that, you know, the valve that was supposed to be opening in my heart, there's, there's, there's three portions to it that open and close when your heart's pumping blood through it, it opens up and, and I'm using my fingers here cause blood goes that way and then it closes and prevents blood from coming back in and your heart pumps again and it opens up. I had a bicuspid valve, which means two of those were melded together you know, at birth, my heart was always pumping. I, the thing that I say is odd about it is that's not, that's not all that uncommon. People, that happens all the time. Usually they catch it early on, like at birth, and they, they'll go in and, you know, they do these surgeries that are very almost invasive because they can go through the groin, neck, armpit, all these places that don't require you to open up. And they can change valves, you know, pre pretty much. Now, there's all kinds of scenarios where they would mm -hmm. have to do open heart surgery. But I say that to say at 51, when I had my surgery, I, I didn't know I had any symptoms. It, it was just a routine physical for me. I, I, didn't, I was, didn't have shortness of breath. And so they, they literally, every person that came to talk to me about you know, pre-surgery, even post-surgery, now are you sure you weren't having shortness of breath? Like, dude, I just did Fran. They don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I just, I just did a 13 mile hike back in the, the highest elevation you can get to in the Sierras mm -hmm. and carrying a 40 pound pack. And I'm, I'm fine. I, I felt nothing. It was a coincidence. It was a blessing. You know, all these things, the reason why they, 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 they caught it. But, um, <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, to answer your question, um, I didn't, I didn't feel any of those symptoms because I was fit and there's a lot of ways to be fit for me. I'm also, like I said, mentioned early on, I'm like a no nonsense. I don't want to him haw around and, you know, no offense to traditional gyms because I was a part of a traditional gym forever. I met my wife in a traditional global gym. I was, I was a trainer. She was a trainer teaching aerobics and all those things back in the day, you know, that were popular. So I've always worked out. I've always been pretty fit for average, you know, average guy. And, um, but what I found is with CrossFit, it's, it's so effective. It's so effective. And yes, you get the benefit from this community, right? Um, I remember when I first started at at, the, at my other gym, my other my other CrossFit family, CrossFit West Visaya, you know, it was explained to me early on 
that that in CrossFit, because I came from a gym. Let's let's face it, I'm a little bit vain, right? I came from a, a, a global gym with mirrors everywhere and you know cut tank tops, and it's about how big you could be and all that stuff, which was never really that important to me. Because it was always about just trying to be fit, trying to put on a little bit of muscle so I could be more confident in myself. Because as a as a younger guy, I was man, I had no confidence in me. I had first of all, I had no no game in talking to women. Thankfully, my wife found me, and I married way out of my league. But I didn't have any game, and I was super skinny, and um, so I I just I wanted to work out, put a little put a little bit of muscle on. So I I did like everyone three hours in a gym, two hours in a gym, arm day, leg day, all these crazy splits and I benefited from that I did I'm not knocking it mm-hmm. but I've been through a, bu- a lot of different stuff I've done triathlons I've done lots of hikes I've done you know Spartan Tough Mudder all those things which are absolutely fun and I've, I'll do more of it but CrossFit is so efficient in the fact that you're coached right and not only are you coached you have someone who has your best um, what, what's the word I'm looking for your best interest in mind not just mentally and hey we're gonna have a great time today and we're gonna go hard and they keep pushing you but they're watching you as fitness professionals which is why I love Red Wolf which is why I love my old family back home at CrossFit West Visaya Mm -hmm. it's trained professionals who are who are looking I have my own weaknesses as you know I I have the flexibility of a brick my shoulder doesn't move well and we've been working on it and 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 coach Danny and you and Caitlin you know give me extra stuff to try and help through some of some of the things that I need to work on <clears throat> but when I but when you're at CrossFit you have you have coaches that literally are coaching you personally not just generally because there's 15 or 20 or 3 people in the class or whatever it is that day they're looking out for you and what you need to work on to be balanced balanced fitness everybody's goal is different Right. My goal is to now, which now I know what I'm fighting for, I'm getting ready for my next fight. And that next fight is going to likely be another heart surgery. Because mm-hmm. at some point, this new valve of mine that I have in there is not going to last. It, I'm putting a lot of miles on it because I'm not treating it like, oh, I have some injury and I got to go, so, you know, I got to slow it down. Mm-hmm. You know, against my wife's better judgment, I'm going hard. I'm, I'm, I'm going to live my life and, and I trust the, the eyes that are on me. Um, the coaches that we have here, I trust that the eyes are on me are watching to make sure that I'm moving properly, that I'm, that I'm still continuing to benefit um, from, from training you know, at, at a level that suits me. Um, and, and I think that anybody that, that you know, if, if you're an Instagram warrior and all you see is the super yoked people that are doing CrossFit, that's, that's, that's Instagram. <clears throat> and I love it. I stare at them too. And they're, they're the people that I want to look like. But my reality is I'm a family man. I, I help. I help in a family business. I have an hour day to hour day to come work out. Sometimes a little more because I'll surf in the morning. I'll do a little YouTube yoga at home to try and help with my mobility. But there's no bang for your buck better. I challenge someone to find it better than CrossFit, than a well thought out program, right? Programming for you know if, if you're watching this, you're probably already a cross, CrossFit person. But programming is how we in CrossFit figure out how we're going to progress, not just today. But throughout the year, throughout the year, so weeks, the lot I can I know because I've been to a lot of different places and I've I've been to some poorly dropped in at some poorly programmed places and I've and I've had the luxury of having two families of very well programmed fitness professionals that have our best interest in mind. I'm not saying that this is an infomercial. I realize me talking comes off as oh my god, this guy what is he is he part owners there? I'm not, and my money is I can spend it wherever I want. And I'm constantly trying to find somewhere better because I believe my life depends on it. And it's not, it's not here. This, this, is, this is the place for me that has proven, um, proven to help me in, in getting, getting ready for my next fight because I was ready for the last one. And I didn't even know what the fight was. It just happened to be open heart surgery. Yeah. It just happened to be open heart Crazy. surgery. Crazy. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for telling your story. This thank was you. awesome. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. And I think you're going to inspire a lot of other people out there to start doing something and doing something before it happens. Yeah, I appreciate it. And to that point, um, I've had a lot of people from the gym reach out to me, you know, DM me on the site asking stuff. I'm, I'm saying it openly on your podcast. If anybody has any questions about anything or want to talk a little bit more about autoimmune disease, which, which I have some of those issues too, feel free to ask me about it. Because what you may be doing is saving, helping to save your life maybe helping to save someone else's life, but 
um, you're going to benefit from CrossFit. A hundred percent, you're going to benefit from the family that's 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 supportive, and from the workouts. Mm-hmm. Which that's where it's at. Okay, awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Sean. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. If this was helpful, please leave us a five star review so we know to make more content just like this. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Red Wolf CrossFit and feel free to send us your questions there. Until next time, good luck, have fun. Nailed it.